Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel, unless of course you're new here, in which case, welcome to the channel in the first place. We are finally getting around to doing the top Copa de la Diversión rebrands for 2022. There's a total of 85 Copa de la Diversión teams, so go ahead and be sure and check out parts 1 and 2 before checking this if you want to see all 85 ranked. These, in my opinion, are the best of the best. They are as good as it gets. I'm not gonna lie, compiling some of these Copa rebrands has made me hungry. So we're gonna start things off with a little field trip and kind of take things a little out of office right now. Feel free and join me for a little adventure. All right, Marty, see you later. A few moments later. Hi, can I get a churro? I got some paper in that bite. There's a very well-known churro vendor either at the ballpark, if not at the ballpark, then just in the city of San Jose. So it's really cool to honor the churro man. It's actually pretty sweet. I don't know his name off the top of my head. I'll put it down here on the bottom. You can see the name of the churro man who is like an icon for the city of San Jose and the team, the San Jose Giants. This one's to you. Big ups, big respect. One of the best team names in all of baseball, not even just for Copa, just period. Now that was an adventure. I guess you could say this video is off to a pretty sweet start. I'll see myself out. At number 19, we've got the Murcielagos de Louisville. Literally just translates to bats. I feel like previously I've kind of knocked logos for that, but I can give this a pass because of the uniqueness of that art style. It's so awesome. It's kind of got this hieroglyphic style. I kept this in the white box just to kind of be able to see it a little bit better, but this looks so sick against the black hats that they wear when they rebrand as the Murcielagos. It gives me Road to El Dorado vibes, which is kind of like an unsung hero of the DreamWorks Pictures lineup. So big shout out to that, I love that movie. At number 19, we've got the Sacramento Dorados. It might be a little suspicious because it's strikingly similar to the tattoo that I have. I've had this tattoo longer than I've known that this team exists. It's just, it's a little spooky though, that just how similar these are. So I guess I'm a Sacramento fan for life. I love the colors on this. They're really saturated and bold and they pop and it looks so nice. But I've actually never even been to Sacramento, but even I know about the Tower Bridge, which is like an icon, like a landmark for the city. It's a really cool way to tie in the brand to the city. And I love that. The Rivercats tried to do that with this alternate logo and it looks all right. Um, I, can, I can see what they're going for. It's just way too busy. And so this Dorado rebrand does it a lot more like subtle and just a lot better executed in my opinion. And finally, at number 17, we get the chance to talk about the team. That's sort of the reason I'm even making these Copa videos in the first place. We're gonna go back to the ballpark for this one, guys. Vamanos. How's it going? Can I get a can I get a churro, please? Just one, one churro, yes, please. Can I also get one of those pickles? And then, do you have the the souvenir, the discount beer here as well? The two dollar beer. Yeah, I'll get one of those. Okay, so one churro, one pickle, and one two dollar beer. It's ten fifty. Awesome. Thank you. Second best snack in the ballpark behind a hot dog. But I gotta talk about the flying chanclas. I'm San Antonio for a minute, trying so hard not to let the bio show, but it is without a doubt one of the best logos in Copa. Every Thursday during the 2022 season, you expect to see the missions playing in their chancla uniforms. And it's like nothing short of incredible. It's just a very, very, very fun time for all the fans, all the family, everyone that comes here. I mean, it's just a blast. I mean, the logo, it's amazing. The name, everything about it is incredible. I didn't expect to be here this long, to be honest, but it's still a 1-1 game here in the top of the ninth. I gotta say, I'm not like in any rush to leave whatsoever. It's been a very good time. I got the churros rolling. That first one was for San Jose. This one's for San Antonio. And we're gonna see how this game ends. What an adventure that was. At number 16, we've got the Cascabeles de Wisconsin. I'm first gonna mention the coolest thing I think about this. The name Cascabeles kind of means jingle bells. So they went with like changing the name to the rattle that the, that the snake makes. Now this logo kind of keeps the fun and the energy of the original Wisconsin Rattlers logo, but it's just with more like a fun twist. The colors are great. They're like fiesta colored. It's very angular looking. This is one of the few times that I think the designers gave an equal amount of attention 
to the logo and to the word mark. The A and the E both have like a fang going on, which is really cool. And then the day Wisconsin kind of in between the fangs. I don't mind that so much either. It's a really nice symmetry. All in all, this logo is very cool. Next up, the Pescados de Carolina for the Carolina Mudcats. This just needs to be like a permanent rebrand for the Carolina Mudcats. I know that's such a polarizing logo for people. They seem to either like really love it or like really hate it. I'm a little indifferent. I see both sides to it, but this objectively is just so much better. This is such like an S tier level. I mean, all of these are, we're, we're in the top 20. So these are all S tier, but my goodness, the Dia de los Muertos vibe going on throughout is so sick. The colors are just fun and vibrant and awesome. The actual like fish mascot looks like tough and fierce coming out of a round element, like swimming towards you. The name Pescado literally just means fish. It's not as like culturally relevant as like a mud cat specifically to this area where the team is. And so it kind of loses me a little bit on that. It sounds like a nitpicky thing. And when we get to these like top level teams, I sort of have to keep that in mind where it's like, I am gonna be a little bit nitpicky for some of these things, but by and large, this logo is so sick. At number 14, the Guerreros de Fayetteville for the Fayetteville Woodpeckers. Fayetteville decided to go with the Warriors, which is actually a really cool nod to the fact that Fayetteville, North Carolina is such a military city with Fort Bragg right there. So it's just a really cool nod to the area, to the community. Fayetteville got that right. We see this really cool like Aztec Mesoamerican design with the warrior. I love this too because it's not just like one piece up top with some words across the bottom. The, the two actually come together with the warrior kind of behind the text. I'm into that. And I love that the G has like feathers that mimic what's going on in the headdress. The best part of this by far though, if you look at the actual headdress of the warrior, it actually contains the logo for the woodpeckers. He's, there's a woodpecker in his headdress. I thought this was pretty good until I noticed that and that took it from like middle of the pack immediately up to S tier, that connection to the original Fayetteville woodpecker logo tied into the Copa rebrand. Genius, it works so well. This is so, whoever designed this absolutely killed it. So impressive, very well done. For this next one, I just gotta apologize in advance. I'm gonna do my best to say it. I'm gonna let Google Translate say it first so you can hear what it's supposed to sound like. Fenómenos enmascarados del Valle de Hudson. Fenómenos enmascarados del Valle de Hudson. Fenómenos enmascarados del Valle de Hudson. The Hudson Valley Masked Phenoms. Another luchador vibe going on here, and it's super cool. <laughs> like, I love his HV luchador mask that he has. I love, like, the unique elemental piece that everything is contained in. Very well done to the... Oh, damn it, I just had it a second ago. Fenómenos enmascarados de... Valle de Hudson. That's the last time I'm gonna attempt to say it. We gotta move on. The Musica de Memphis. Memphis, known for music, rebranding as music notes. Love this. The Memphis Redbirds used this team for a while for Copa, and then they like, I feel like they stopped for a little while, and then they brought it back, and I was really happy to see that, because this is awesome. This mimics the neon and things that you would see like on Beale Street in Memphis. It's just very fun, and it's so culturally relevant to the city of Memphis and its history there. It's a very smart choice for them to embrace the music identity that the city is known for and to use that as Copa. The colors are vibrant and colorful and like have nice reflections of like the Latin community. I love that. Everything about this, awesome. <sighs> Get a black cat if you ever just want hair on literally everything you own. We've got the Naturales del Noreste de Arkansas. This logo kind of looks more like a soccer shield, truth be told, like more than anything else. But the bird in this logo is so tough and so fierce. This team is just called the Naturals and their logo just kind of has like a waterfall and some different like nature-y looking things going on. So they pulled back away from that and said, let's just make this like badass looking eagle our logo for no reason. And I'm cool with that because they absolutely nailed it. It's awesome. It matches the colors of the Mexico national football team. Honestly, that's probably where the eagle comes into play now that I'm thinking about it. Totally makes sense to me, I'm all on board. Absolutely love this team, sick logo. We start our top 10 with another tongue twister. Please bear with me. The Bandidos del Rio de las Ciudades Cuadruples. Quad City River Bandits, goodness gracious. This is one of the newest rebrands for Copa. There's a brand new Copa identity in 2022. It's simple in that it like almost completely matches the original Quad City River Bandits logo, but it works so well here. It's fun and creative. It doesn't really reinvent the wheel on itself and try and do too much. The Serape design sombrero is just absolutely gorgeous with the colors going on in it. Like honestly, it's really an exact copy of the OG name and logo, but aesthetically like this slaps. They even changed the mascot's name for Copa. He goes from rascal to picado, which means rogue.
two thumbs up. Our top 10 is starting very strong here. At number nine, we've got the Reyes de Plata de Las Vegas. Now, Nevada actually is known as a silver state based on its discovery and abundance like back in the 1850s. Well, fun fact. So here we see a skeleton miner complete with like a ripped up prospector hat and a baseball bat for a pickaxe. Love that. He's got a jersey with LV for Las Vegas with this beautiful blue trim going on. He's contained within a diamond shape with beautiful text, like word mark going over him. The whole thing is contained in this gorgeous piece with this awesome blue trim. He's even got a silver tooth. I mean, come on, it's the attention to detail in these logos that make them so iconic. The Vegas team did me so dirty a few years ago going from the 51s to the Aviators, which was like one of my most hated name changes and logo changes. This more than makes up for it. I love this logo. At number eight, this kills me because I'm not a fan of this team in any way, shape or form. The Pointy Boots de Amarillo is freaking badass. I love, love, love this name. I feel like I love it so much more because of how much I despise the actual team name of the Sod Poodles. That name is so bad, but this name and logo are so good that like that gap between like love and despise is so big. This works great with no text at all. It just lets the logo speak for itself. It's got wheat on the boots, which works really well. It ties back into the Sod Poodles logo, as well as just the region itself. So it's a cool connect to the team name of Todd Poodles and the region of Amarillo. Super cool. At number seven, we've got the Santos de San Pablo for the St. Paul Saints. Now this rebrand has leaned in like head first to the St. Paul Saints mascot, which is a pig for some reason named Madonna. Not that Madonna, this Madonna. Did that? Did that clear anything up for you with this logo? It didn't. We have the same information right now. I went down like a mile long rabbit hole, Wikipedia, Reddit, Twitter, gathering up facts about Madonna, like where she came from, why she's here, why the St. Paul Saints have gone with this as their mascot. I can't really get any like definite answers on this. I will say that the Saints have a live pig mascot on the field that they use for like every home game and they retire the pig and introduce a new one every year with like a brand new name. Past names include Space Ham, Kevin Bacon, Borak Obama, Piggy Smalls, Slumhog Millionaire, Stephen Cole Bohr, and who could forget the iconic Pork Knight. For those curious, the 2022 version of the St. Paul Madonna pig is of course 867530swine. All that said, this is dope. We see Madonna in the outline of home plate with this really awesome, like bold text of Santos right above it. Kind of gives me like a Grand Theft Auto vibe. We've got the Halo and Dia de los Muertos things going on with it. And that logo of Madonna and that text above really work harmoniously together. Those two things aren't trying to like outdo each other, but they both are so strong on their own that this whole thing works so well at just one beautiful looking piece. This is awesome. Next up, we've got the Cokies de Lehigh Valley for the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs. This is like one of the only logos that I can confidently say is just Pretty. Like, look, it's just pretty looking. The Cokie Frog has the same design as the actual like Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs with like that iron and metal and, and nuts and bolts kind of thing going on. So it really keeps that cohesion with the original team name, but it's done in like a simple kind of like subtle way. So it's not like overly in your face with that kind of like ironness, iron vibe going on. The colors and the patterns are like simple, but they're elegant. It's it just works so well, plain and simple. It's just pretty. It's a very pretty logo. Next up, we've got the Pinatas de Erie. This logo is so much fun. My God. That Pinata logo strikes that perfect balance again of being like cute, but tough and fierce at the same time. The colors here are phenomenal. Like I, I just, I love how bold and saturated and fun they are. They're just very vibrant. Like the best color palette on this list, I, I would confidently say. The Pinata swinging down like through the text is also just fun and adds like an energetic kind of motion to this. I love, this is so cool. I mean, also who's ever looked at a pinata and like frowned? Like pinatas are just fun, man. Taking the number four spot, the Calaveras de West Michigan. Now this is absolutely among the best. It does a fantastic job at tying things back to the original team and logo as far as like that, that wave kind of coming in. This looks just like that. But the best little pieces of this logo are actually in the small details. For example, if you look close, you can see a 616 going in through the face of the skull 
which is actually the area code for Grand Rapids, Michigan, where this team plays. You can also see little pieces of imagery of baseball, including the stitching of a baseball going up the side of his skull, little baseballs in the eyes, which is actually filling the negative space of the sixes. It's got home plate, baseball bats, little pieces in his face. I love that so much. His lower jaw, like I said, is emulating that wave coming in. It's just so awesome. It's so well-rounded, like literally, it's in a round shape. This is a very underappreciated logo, I would say. This is awesome. Coming in to start our top three, we have the Medusas de Jersey Shore. You want to talk about colors. I mean, just let this speak for itself. Again, we see like fierce, tough, but also cute and fun. He's got a bat made out of coral, I believe, which is funny. You can kind of see through like the jelly of his head. So he sort of looks like like an astronaut in a way. <laughs> the tentacles coming down are really fun. There is like a flow to this one as well, where it looks like he's kind of like swimming like up and towards you almost. I can confidently say as well that this team has the best hat in Copa de la Diversion, bar none. It is like always sold out. I can't ever find it my size. If someone has an extra seven and three, eight new era lying around, hit me up. I would wear this hat every single day. At number two, we've got the Peros Santos de Charleston for the Charleston River Dogs. This is an incredible logo. The skull dog is so great. The baseball diamond behind him is a really nice touch. There's bones surrounding the infield. I love it. It's got like these baseball pieces, but also these Dia de los Muertos things going on. You see that golden halo, which wraps everything up nicely tying it back from the river dogs to the holy dogs. Like, I love this. It's it's perfect in every way. That name is fantastic. Even the simplified version of this without all the things in the background where it's just the dog's head with the halo is so beautiful and works so well on its own. In fact, like that's, that's the design that's on the caps. It's just that dog and halo. But all these other pieces coming together, all the colors, all the little details, like you add all that up and you have like one perfect logo in every way. I really, really, really wanted to make this number one for a long time for me. This was number one until I spent more time looking at this and I had to go with somebody else. Jesus. The Gatos Feroces de New Hampshire. Simply Phenomenal. Excellent ties to the original team name of the Fisher Cats. I'm just going with the Ferocious Cats here. This looks like a horror movie poster, like a classic 30s, 40s, like B-movie horror poster. I would say this is not something you see every day, but it is something I see every day because my cat Marty, who's like the fangiest animal I've ever met. What a fantastic, like Mesoamerican horror movie poster style thing going on. This is like the most original and unique art style to any logo that I've seen in a long, long time. Again, we see amazing colors with the yellow, the red, the black. Once again, I also get Road to El Dorado vibes with that big cat. It feels weird complimenting New Hampshire because I don't know how many times that's been done in history. But yeah, props to New Hampshire. This might be the best thing about the state is this logo. And there you have it guys, the best Copa de la Diversión logos for 2022. If you enjoyed this, be sure and like and subscribe. That helps me out a lot. Also let me know down in the comments which logo is your favorite. Let me know if there's any you absolutely hated or ones that you felt deserve more justice in their ranking. Appreciate you guys. Thanks again. We'll see you in the next video.